Hey everyone, this is Penny, Penny and Creations. How are you today? I hope you are having a beautiful day. Everyone, I was going to show you some projects that I am working on and I just want you to know that the projects I'm working on is based on lessons. Me um, studying knitting and putting in time and effort so I can understand how the stitches are formed and to recognize an error whether it's a drop stitch or I didn't take off the the stitch when I you know advanced the needle the yarn around the needle and I didn't take off the stitch and that remained up there so I am I am in in school learning training so a lot of these projects is based on that as you know, I was saying that I wanted to do socks and I realized I cannot do socks because of my tension problems with knitting and purling. So if you having a problem with purling, you need to rectify that before you decide to do socks because if you cannot manipulate that yarn back and forth um, in front of your needles or behind your needles um, effortlessly you're going to have a gauge problem and being that I am a continental knitter I was having a problem getting that yarn in front of the needles and I had to go to one of my friends and I'm not sure if I have him on this iPad oh let's see mm, let's see no I don't see my I don't know where my library is I don't even use my um they go me they go me okay here we go one second everyone okay here we go right here make sure that I block out other things okay so I like to watch this man I think it's skins s-k-e-i-n-s -E I'll, I'll enlarge it um, after I show you get out of there okay so let's see hold on a second everyone Yes, yeah, skin up. I can't play videos because I'll get in trouble. I'm just trying to get to. Hi, my name is Bjorn. Okay, hold on, everyone. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay. Okay. Oh my God! Fingerprints everywhere. I'm blaming on that cow. <laughs> okay. So, knitting basics. How to knit and purl. Skino, S-K-E-I-N-O yarn. That's him on YouTube. And he basically could knit continental or a thrower size. And I was able to follow him with the purl. How, how how to pearl if you're a continental user. He is not one and done. There's so many other people out there. If, if you're looking for a video to show you something and you can't follow a person, go to the next video. Go to the next video. So he happened to be the, the person that helped me with my situation, okay? So, 
the last couple of months, I have been working on my knitting. Let's see, what is this? This project back here is Chicken Boots made by Della. This is the Jimmy Bean collection. And like I said before, Della Q has other names under it. For example, this is Chicken Boots. And this is a, another line as well under the Della Q. Okay, but I'll put the Jimmy Beans link in the description area and you can browse and take a look. Okay, so this is, okay, we can start off. We're going to just go, no, let me not do that because then that's out of, Order. Let me just start with knitting because that's what I was talking to you about. Okay, this is season pouch. This is the Ayana. I'm saying Ayana. Lion brand discontinued yarn. It's not Ayana. Okay, that's the name. And it's been on the shelf right here for 100 years. And I've just been working on it recently. First time I used it, I used it to crochet and I didn't like it. It was the worst and I hadn't touched it in two years and I pulled it down to practice knitting with it because I was like, I don't like that yarn and guess what? I like it for knitting. Mm -hmm. I have, it still makes this noise. Let me use my scarf to try and tap down some of this scraping from the needles. Okay, without me getting tangled up in a mess. Okay, everyone. So, as I was saying, I'm having a problem with purling. Now, if you knit in the round, as you know, you need, you just, you're just doing garter stitch. And you're going to get that, the chain look. You're going to get that. But if you're not knitting in a round, you're going to have to do... A garter stitch on this side and on this side you do a purl stitch so bear with me everyone the needles are too long because that's what I have um, <laughs> I have a lot of slip boxes and, and totes in front of my drawers my craft drawers in the other room and I couldn't get to my needles and I would rather use something that's too long than to just grab my phone and, and, and click buy now okay so okay now I know what this is so to keep this from curling on the side I asked someone how could I prevent that curling on the side when you're doing this type of stitch? And they told me to do to do five garter stitches in the middle and then five at the end, and that will prevent that curling. This one is okay, but... I think in the middle of the other one, I did too many, too many stitches. I don't know if I did 50 or 60, but I, I, I don't, I didn't care for it. So maybe when I look at it now, being that I haven't seen it in a little while, um, I may actually love it. Okay, so this is to be, prevent it from curling. And I like this style when they do it in the blanket. 
but I'm not too happy about it for a scarf so we'll see but it's okay because I am I am practicing my craft and so far everything looks very nice my stitch gauge is nice I don't have any drop stitches and I'm happy with the outcome thanks to that man who showed me how to get the yarn in front of the needles when I need to do a purl and get it back without dropping everything and readjusting my yarn because that's what I was doing and that's what was causing a gauge problem but see I still don't have a handle on taking the thread and and bringing it over the front of the needle it's come it'll come this way instead of back here it'll be like this so what I do is I take the needle and I just bring it over and that works for me mm -hmm. the crochet books knitting books um, really the next release that comes out needs to have some changes in it because they are old when I brought a crochet book when I first started they were teaching us how to wrap the needle and unfortunately I used the word that this is stupid I was getting frustrated I'm like this is stupid I'm not gonna keep doing that do you know how much time that's taken out of my life and I'm gonna be tired because I'm keeping doing this all the time and then I found myself grabbing, I'll demonstrate it on another one, grabbing the needle, going in, grabbing it, grabbing the thread, going in, grabbing the, the yarn, grabbing it, pulling, grabbing, pulling. And I said, what are you doing? And I goes, oh my goodness, I hope I didn't mess up. Then I would go back to throwing the yarn back over like the book is teaching us, like um, YouTube University teaches us, put, throw the yarn over. And all of a sudden, I would just go back and grab and grab. And I'm like, Penny, you can't do that. You're gonna, you're messing up the stitches. And I was just fighting with myself to keep throwing the yarn over and keep throwing the yarn over. And unconsciously, my hand was like, no, we're not doing that. It's the same thing. Just go and bring the yarn forward. That's all you need to do. So one day I looked at my stitches and I noticed when I take the yarn and I bring it over or I take the yarn and I grab and pull it through my stitches was identical but I was still nervous about it but it was identical then after a while I said you know something this is how you knit so continue to do that. And I found that to be faster than, th than I don't want to say throwing it, than taking a yarn and wrapping it over the needle. And of course, it's faster and it's less movement on my arm, which is to keep um, carpal tunnel at bay. So I said, wow. You know, this is impressive. Until I saw Steven on YouTube and West on YouTube, and he was knitting the same way I was knitting. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. He knits like me. And then it took off in the knitting industry. People who was throwers wanted to be continental knitters because they say we knit faster, but I'm gonna say, hold on, that may not be true. Because think about this. If you're a thrower, of course, what you used to do before, you used to take a take the the thread and you used to just do this old wild white over the needle really why you would just take it 
left hand, left hand. Where you at? Okay, come on. I got a tail. This is the tail. It's a working, working y'all. Okay, you would just take it and you would just wrap it over. You would just have such a, a big swing over instead of just swinging it over real close to her. Why were we doing this? So wow. And somebody was like, oh my God, you're just going to punch yourself in the face because that's basically what it looks like. And I was like, I'm not doing that. If I have to do that, I'm never going to knit. I don't want to knit because I felt that was a waste of my time and unproductive. So now throwers, some throwers convince themselves that they need to be continental knitters because continental knitters knit faster. It is a faster motion because you're just going in and out. You know, and your, 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 your thread is right there. Your yarn is right there. I'm on an embroidery machine, everyone, so I've been dealing with thread. That's why I keep saying thread. And you're coming in and out, and there's basically no movement. Um, un, unlike a thrower, you have m movement. But I'm saying slow your roll, because think about this. Although it looks like continental knitters are faster than throwers, it may not. It, I don't think that's true, because think about a a um, runner. One who runs straight and one who runs hurdles. You think the person that's running a hurdle is slower than a person that, that runs without jumping over a hurdle. It's not true. It's just how fast you can do that technique. That's all it is. So if you want to learn how to do continental, I would applaud you for that. But I do not want you to think that continental people are knitting faster. I'm not believing that. And I'm a continental knitter. Because I've seen some throwers and they actually don't even look like they throw it because they, they're right here together. Did you just see this moving? So why would you change that? This lady has a YouTube channel and and I think she is a expert knitter, although she keeps saying she's not, she's learning. But the, the sweater she puts out, please, lady, pat yourself on the back. You are an expert knitter. Um, she wants to change her way of knitting and do continental. Just reduce your movement. That's all you need to do. If you find yourself going too far up in the air to, to wrap your yarn around, just bring it down a little bit. I don't see why you need to change. I don't, it's nothing technique out there that's saying, hey, you need to be a content knitter to order to do this stitch. It's something out there like that. So I got your back. Um, throw us, keep doing what you're doing. And don't think that continental knitters are faster knitters and I'm a continental knitter I have my speed has increased because I'm knitting a lot but I don't believe that theory I just don't so that's my that's how I feel about that you know keep y'all keep doing what y'all doing you guys are excellent okay so spend too much time on that so Getting a little tangled here. I just want to put my stuff back nice and neat so it doesn't have all those unnecessary folds. The, the knit cord is too long, but I had to use what I had. Okay, so that was that one. What else we have? You saw this one. This one I showed you. And this is by the same, this is the same yarn. 
label that I used on the last one. This is coming off the needle, everyone. I thought I was going to add another skein, but um, I feel it in my heart that I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. People ask me all the time, what size do you make your blanket? I said, it normally tells me when to say, hey, that's it. That's enough. Mm -hmm. So that's the label. It's pretty. Um, I can't see the color because I actually need readers now. And Kevin was laughing. So it's not the lighting so much. It's the reading. So I showed this before. Let me move this out of the way. I think once I... Go a little further. I may um, snip it and make the new blankets. Um, and then people are making, making and knitting. They're taking their little balls and they making strips. And they just add in the strips along to to make a blanket. Um, so you can call it scrap scrap knitting blanket. So I may be interested in that, but I just don't want a whole bunch of yarn around me. That's gonna stress me out. I'm not into that. So this pool, it made a pooling effect. Mm -hmm. This is where I add a new yarn. I just didn't cut it. Um, I put the safety pin here because I was measuring it. Tell you if I'm in a bed and my lazy butt don't want to get up. I grab anything I can grab. I slipped the first stitch and I, most of the time when people slip the first stitch, this they use the yarn in front of them I have to look at that and see what kind of edging that is so probably the next um, lesson I do I'll do that with the yarn in front so this is red basically ready to come off mm-hmm as easy it is to take off the needle off the project I always delayed that don't know why just don't want to do that little simple task doesn't make sense to me okay so put that over here this one over there and what else we have for you? I'll just put these two back. Okay, so. This is a hot mess because this was in the beginning of the purling. If you can, mm, let's see, you can see a lot of, you can see some, a lot, you can see some gauge problems. See that's right here. You see that line going up, see that hole? See all this sticking up here? These are all gauge issues. Not drop stitches, but gauge issues. That's all they are. And see in the front, you know, it's just nothing nice and neat at all from the the one I showed you in the beginning, which wasn't that wide, but I'll show you again when it get larger. See, look at all down here. See, it's nice. Then it goes too big like this one hanging out. Mm -hmm. I was having problems with getting that yarn, yarn in front for the pearl. So... After what I did was I put this down and I went and got a bulky yarn and I practiced with that and I almost completed a scarf and I said, okay, you're ready. So go get the worsted, worsted, um, not finger, not worsted, um, fingering weight yarn and you're ready to go now. And I was, mm -hmm, I was. So these are some of the things that you have to do. This is good yarn. This is this is 
don't know. I don't understand. Hey, oh, wait, wait, here we go. How do I keep using, losing these tags? Vintage Barocco DK. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I get to reclaim that and put it back in a ball so it can make a project with that. Okay? Put that back here and this is a a shawl that I'm working on and I don't even know I haven't written down anything with the the website on YouTube I think it's a a knit a knit a a, um, a shawl with one one hank I think that's that was um this doesn't belong here that's how I, I looked it up mm -hmm. but it's basically um slip the 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 first I'm thinking everyone I'm not sure I don't remember the first two steps and the last two steps I don't remember but besides the first two and the last two all this is guarded you're just getting a different look on the edge how they give you the holes uh -huh. and I've made these uh, a couple of them already so this has been a challenging yarn and I have 10 of these and everything I tried didn't work out so I gave it a shot with this shawl and it's coming out to be um, nice better than um, any other the, any other projects that I did start with the yarn mm -hmm. yeah I think this is probably the third one yeah this was sitting on in the yarn ball um, in front of the television just sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and I just grabbed it it's like okay you have to work for something I have ten of you guys <laughs> let's go okay did we get everything over here and this is actually I this is oh my goodness trying to trying to think this is webs I'm calling it their in-house yarn Everyone, this is a shame. I have, I have yet to show you this bag of yarn. But my schedule. I even put it in a plastic bag because I knew it was going to sit here a while. Hold on. Hold on, everyone. One second. Oh, let me turn you up. So, okay. Oh, I get this plastic back off here. Let's see. Oh boy. Let's see. I'm trying to locate the. Okay, here we go. Now I know what it is. This is um. webs i'm calling it the in-house yarn the valley yarns and i'm thankful to one of our colleagues don't like to call you guys subscribers one of our colleagues here um who asked me several times i think she doesn't live too far from the store and she asked me hey have you ever tried the valley valley yarns and then it's like i want to you know, to get into the more of the merino wool and the wool 
100% wool, virgin wool, and things like that. And I brought a comb and I started working with it, which is this yarn right here. And I was just so impressed. And I ran upstairs to look inside the comb under the bottom to find out what yarn it was because I wanted to order another comb. The comb was going for 80 something dollars. They put it on sale for low 60s, 64, some $64, somewhere in that range. And it went to the website and, and my orders and I pulled it up and it was no longer in stock. And that's when I learned that it was Valley Yarns. Mm -hmm. And I said, when I go to Webs for the tent sale, that's what I'm getting, Valley Yarns. I'm in love with Valley, Valley Yarns. It's a very nice yarn. It's inexpensive, but excellent quality. Now, I took the needles out and I just put a safety yarn in here. So that's why you see this at the bottom. You see this, see? That's what that is. It's just, I just removed the, the needles to use on another project. Okay? So, I have to wash all of these up to get the oil from the machine out. And what they didn't take out when they washed. And of course, look at my hands. The oil, natural oil use from my hands. This is one reason why I don't go in the store touching everything because the oil is on my hands because I'm mindful of somebody who wants to buy that. If I'm interested in buying something, then I will start this touching and to make sure this is something I want. But I'm not gonna walk up and down the aisle touching everything. That's me. I know it's 95% of you people out there just have to touch everything. And also I think it was my upbringing too when we went into the stores, we were not allowed to touch things. We were told, don't you touch nothing. Don't touch. And I took it as because kids, what do they do? Break stuff in the store all the time. That's how I always took it. So as I got older and was able to spend my own money, that still uh, was a part of me just wasn't touching everything so the natural oil use in my hand um, I'm gonna leave my finger fingerprint on all of the yarn that I touch and I don't want to do that at all so that's why I don't go in the store and, and touch everything matter of fact one of the ladies I watch in embroidery she's home She's, she went back to her home country. She's Korean. And she went into a store. You know, I think, I don't know if it was a clothing store. And she, her husband said she has a problem. She has to touch everything. And she lost a lot of her shopping girlfriends because of that touching stuff. It says she has to touch everything. And of course, it prolongs the shopping trip. Well, she went into the store touching everything and moving the clothes around and then she left and a lady said something to her and and basically she told us that it was bad luck because she was the first customer in there and she was touching things and she didn't buy nothing <laughs> I said, she said she wasn't aware of that <laughs> so I think she said she was going to go back in there and, and try to purchase something because she felt really bad. And that, that, and that lady that I watch, her name is Jeannie, and she is a sweetheart. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I love watching her. Yeah, so uh, that's why I don't touch everything, everyone. You know, I, I don't make demands on no one. 
And like I said, I think it has something to do with my child, um, childhood, how I was raised. And Calvin said the same thing um, went on with him. And Calvin's older than I. So um, he said that it was the same as well. You know, when he went into the stores, he was told, don't touch anything. So I, I just took it that we were going to break stuff because kids always knocking over stuff. Okay, so this one is done. This one is a Valley Yarn, which is an excellent um, fiber to work with, high quality fiber, and very affordable. Um, one of our colleagues said, I don't shop at Webs because it's too expensive. And I said, no, it's not. Um, go and look and filter it down to three and five dollars and you'll be amazed at what you see and she she said that she would do that she would do that if i can remember that to measure this before i put it in water and just do a little stretching on it and see how much would it yield i plan on giving this to calvin anyway because he doesn't like um, long super scarves like I do. He just, men like to just keep it um, just basically at the top of their chest. And some of them have a little, little scarf that's longer. Okay, so that's what this is. And I know Prime is coming up. If you get this video before Prime is over, I think I picked this up at Amazon and for the most part it works, but then the yarn gets trapped under here. Under here. When you're pulling it. See? See I went under there? Mm-hmm. Very inexpensive. It serves its purpose, but that's the only bad thing about it. It gets tangled. Now, if they think that we, I'm supposed to use this part, um, it's a possibility, but it's not because the it doesn't. It's too narrow. Mhm. Mm so I guess it's supposed to be a two, two and one on or, or not. Who knows? But it's, it was okay. It just, every once in a while I had to stop and uh, and take it off and, and get the yarn from under there. I'll continue to use it. What is this? Are we on to some knitting? No, sorry. Crochet. I think this was um, in a hallway. I have yarn totes in a hallway on the second floor. Very hot, unforgettable. And just a scarf for sure. That's all. It's pretty colors, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Double crochet. Just gave something for me to do. That's all, you know. I didn't weave in my ends there. Um, I usually wait, but by that time I should have weaved it in, but I just didn't. Mm-hmm. And Calvin was so nice to cake these up. I think that this is not friendly. Excuse me. If you. If you keep it in the form that it came from the manufacturer, it's not friendly to crochet or knit from that form. So I asked him to put it in two cakes or even a ball. So he did the cake thing. Mm -hmm. So I forgot all about this. I totally forgot about this. So. This is light 
and I'm missing something. Maybe I'll see. I think I'm missing one. I'm missing a project. A nurse at the VA I showed, she said, what are you? She said, is this knitting or crochet? So I said, it's, it's knitting. And um, she said, oh, it's so, your stitches are so tiny. So I said, yeah, because the yarn is, is very small. I said, I love making blankets, but it's just too hot. Ooh, and we going back into a heat wave. Okay, everyone, let's see what's over here. Uh, did I do this? No, didn't do this. This is a, what line is this? This is Della Q, but I'm not sure what line it is. I love this bag. It holds so many different projects. And you just, I just put my stuff back in here and I hang it up on the hook. And if I need to take this this whole tote with me, I can. It's just so nice, this tote. It is really nice. You know, it is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. I didn't fill this and this is fill this up with needles, crochet hooks rather. I think this is what yes, for crochet hooks. Maybe they would have gave me the line for this Della Q. Q. I think um, double pointed needles can also go in here as well. I think so as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, these these numbers is going to wear off. That I do know. I can look at the stamp and tell. Mm -hmm. I can look at that and tell. That's nice. That's a nice case. I need to fill that up. And. Put. Keep this in the back. I don't understand. This is all this stuff is a set everyone. I don't understand why I don't have the back to this design. I don't want to tie you up and go ahead on the iPad and see if it's one there because I've been yapping for so long. But I need to keep, this looks like it's a set. And if they do have a separate bag for this design, I would love to get it because it's not that expensive at all. That's one thing I like about this line. It is relatively inexpensive. It's nothing but cotton. Uh-huh. Cause this this shouldn't be mixed together like this. And put one of my notion pouches in here. See? And I am good. It holds so much. This one. See? It's like, oh, what do I want to work on? Don't even don't even think. Just pick up your bag and just go. Let's see what we have here. We have a fiber spider shawl. And this is yarn from Ice. I combined two threads. Two threads, see? On embroidery. Two strands of yarn together. So that's folded in half. When I want instant gratification, I do a fiber spider shawl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always gonna do me a fiber spider so That's what I called it. It's not called that <laughs> on his his um page. And if I'm not mistaken, it's not even his design. But someone let him show us do a tutorial on the design, and I've been making it possibly for the last five years. Yes, it's one of my go-to. It's like a blanket. Mm -hmm. Excuse the um, the snaps making that noise, everyone. I don't like it either. Anything else? Let's see. I have one more behind me. I have to find out about this uh, 
a tote for this line. I don't like how this looks. No, we did we go over this one? No, we didn't go over this one. This is Lion Brand collection right here. Cotton cotton jean. Let me see you fill it up so you can get a look at it. I'm going to tie it. Let's see. Let's see, everyone. Let's go to Lion Brand. And pull up. LB. Okay, here we go, right here. Cotton jean, right there. It's um, on sale, 6,029 cents. I think the yarn is up to 40% off. By the time you get this, it the sale may be over. But I'll continue to post the deals, like I always do. Yeah, so and this is very nice. Finally, after all these years, I got to work with this. What I was saving it for, I had no idea. Really nice to work with. And I grabbed it because um, I didn't need to make a, a, a cake out of it. Not like I was going to do it. I was going to ask Calvin to do it, but that's why I grabbed it. Now... Did I, I didn't do this one. Please, Penny, are you crazy? No. It was the other one. I have two of these, right, everyone? Please. Yeah. So, this one right here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It's, it needs to be a little wider. So, you'll be able to appreciate the stitches. Bear with me, everyone. For some reason, as organized as I am, everything is twisted. And I do not ball my stuff up and put it in a bag. So how it gets like this, I don't know. This yarn is, get out of there. Okay. It's like, Penny, what are you doing? Okay. One second, okay. Okay, got everything straightened out. Stop it already with that noise. Okay, so maybe you can see. Although I put it on something, it finds the table. I need somebody else to hold the other. So I'm seeing if I can... Maybe if I wrap it around, that'll help me. Stay over there making that noise. Okay, see how nice and pretty that is, everyone? See? And that's what happened. I took time, time, and concentrated and worked on my crafts. And this is knitting and purling. Very nice from what I showed you from that that cream color yarn that um, I used with the um, Barocco, how mess that was. And look now, mm -hmm. save your stuff, which is I made a mistake from years ago, didn't save my stuff. And that's motivation to see where you started from and where you going. In order to go somewhere, you have to start from somewhere nice right now again this was this was the same one when i asked a young lady about how to stop this curling on the side she suggested i do five garter stitches at the beginning and then start my knitting and purling and i believe um i'm 
No, this is actually this is actually the one. I'm not a fan of this one because in the middle from the beginning and the end point, I use too many stitches. I think I have 60 here. And I usually use 60 stitches for a scar. Maybe sometimes that's too much depending on the yarn. So I'm thinking about taking it out and reducing this, the middle part, maybe down to 40. And I'm also thinking about not using that edging. I saw another edging I like. Um, this looks like something for a blanket or a sweater. I don't like this for the scarf. Yeah, so, so practice what they say, make perfect. And I know the lady who's helping me on here, she's like, oh, Penny, way to go. Yes, way to go. Very nice. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Calvin and I was finishing up my scarf and I looked down and several rows down and I dropped the stitch. And I was like, I can't believe this. I get 90% done and I make an error. And I just put it down and I, I contacted her and she um i asked her what do they mean by um when they say they 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 pull back the the stitches and she was basically saying you know it's not as if they ripping it out because i know that you can't if you rip that out how, how do you know what row you on so she's like basically you just um going in there and reversing your stitches so you can take the stitcher out. And I said, oh, okay. And I already knew how to do that, but the language they was using, I didn't understand. So I went and I just took a part of one, one stitch at a time. And that was so therapeutic with me. I just got a, I got joy out of just correcting that error, taking those stitches out one at a time. I sure did. So it's nice when you have someone you can email and ask them a question. Surely I go to Google first and exhaust all of my research before I just, you know, go to YouTube or, or go to um, call someone on a phone or, or email that person. So is that it, everyone? That's it. That's it. Okay, look. I'm tied up. Okay, put this back. I think I'm going to take this out, everyone. And I guess this will be another scarf for Calvin. And I'm going to reduce the, the numbers inside. And I may... I'm, now that I'm saying it's going for Calvin, I may just keep... Keep the five... The garter stitches in the front and the behind or I just may look for me another simple simple outline in the beginning and then the end so it doesn't curl because mm -hmm. this reminds me of the bl of a blanket I'm not going for that look what is this oh this was something free I remember this, but I can't remember where it came from. Okay, is that it? That's it, everyone. I don't need all these different people in one bag, so hopefully they have a tote for this design. All right, everyone, I'll just put um, Jimmy Bean's line in the jimmy beans website in the description area and also i'll put um webs um the valley yarn in the description yarn so you can just look at um all the different yarns size and and different fibers okay and of course prices mm -hmm. all right everyone thanks a lot appreciate your support don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and 
consider re subscribing, you know? I lost like 20 people for no reason. I haven't did anything, you know? Okay, so I'll talk to you soon. All right? Bye.